Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. I'm Doug Handy. I'm Abir Shanawi, and welcome to a conversation with Abir and Doug. It is very good to be here with you all this mm -hmm. morning. Uh, today we'll be having a conversation with guests that I know well, and I know Abir knows them also. Mm -hmm. They are three members from the Office of Music and Dance Education. Um, Abir, what are your thoughts on having a conversation with these, these five folks? I'm excited because I always tell people I am not musically inclined at all. I wish I was. I can't play any instruments. I don't think I can sing. Although can I dance? Just like to. Okay, now here's here's the caveat for <laughs> if, dancing. If you can move. You can dance. That's what they okay. say. Okay, I can do a mean Palestinian depkil. Okay. Okay, I can do okay. some traditional dances. Back in the day, okay, I'm I'm aging myself. I used to do a mean Bobby Brown. Every step you take, that whole video, I could choreograph that entire video. That's serious. Yeah, That's but serious. now. Not any, not so much. My daughters right. think my dance moves are horrible. <laughs> <laughs> that, does that answer your question? <laughs> that does. That does. How about uh, yourself? What do you hmm? um, sing, dance? I, I sing in the shower. I think I can. I can sing in the mm. shower. I'm that doesn't count. Wait, no, um, I'm still waiting for um, my my instruction on the triangle. That's that seems to be my projection according to my my team for music and dance. I can certainly take my place on the triangle when the time is right. As far Wait, as the instrument. triangle, like the ding triangle. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, it's an okay. instrument. It's a, it's a percussion instrument. True. Um, so like you, I don't have a lot of musical ability. Um, that's not for lack of trying on my, my mm -hmm. parents' part. Um, however, what about dancing? I, uh, dancing. Yeah. I'll, I'll, you know, I do a little, little salsa, I do a little, you know, uh, oh, whatever, okay. whatever hits me. Grew up in Baltimore. So you throw on some Baltimore house, then um, uh -huh. you, you never know what's going to happen. Um, you know, so I, I do a little oh, something, but, I, but Baltimore, did you say Baltimore house? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. House we had music. that conversation about Chicago house, house music. music versus yeah, Baltimore house music. And all that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so we, people, people didn't tune in to hear us talk about all this. this, this. No, Let's we, bring on some folks who really know about. Good morning, um, G. Good morning, G. Good to see you. Yes. Um, folks who really know about music and dance, mm -hmm. right? So we yep. want to hear from them. So, so our first guest is Amy Cohn. And Amy Cohn is currently the coordinator of music and dance education in Baltimore County Public Schools. She has degrees from West Virginia University and Loyola University, Maryland. She is in her 29th year in public education. Thank you for your service, Amy. Having taught in Howard and Baltimore counties before serving as coordinator of music in Anne Arundel County for 10 years. Wow, she's got so much experience all over the state. Amy is passionate about success and opportunities for all students to engage in arts education. Good morning, Amy. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Great. Welcome. Thanks Thank so much for having me. Oh, we, we're excited. Our pleasure. Yep. All right. And joining Amy and joining us, we're also going to have uh, Dr. Brian Schneckenberger. Uh, Brian is supervisor of music and dance for Baltimore County Public Schools. He currently serves as president of the Maryland Music Educators Association and as a steering committee member for the Teaching with Primary Sources Project for the National Association for Music Education. Brian also teaches adjunct in the Music Education Department at Towson University. He received his PhD in Curriculum and Instruction, Music Education from the University of Maryland, College Park. So please join me in welcoming uh, Dr. Brian Schneckenberger to our conversation. Welcome, Brian. Good morning, Brian. Welcome. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me on. Thank you for, Thanks being, for being on here. the show. Yes. And last but not least, we have Sonia Sinkowski, who is an artist, educator, uh, and administrator currently serving as the dance resource teacher in the Office of Music and Dance Education for Baltimore County Public Schools. Her work is deeply rooted in administering and growing K through 12 public school dance programs and making connections to the Baltimore area dance com community, excuse me. Sonia also serves as the executive director of The Collective Dance Company in Baltimore, Maryland, and the president of the Maryland Dance Education Association, a proud state affiliate of the National Dance Education Association. Very busy, and welcome, Sonia. Good morning. It's good, good to morning. be here. Welcome, oh, welcome, welcome. Yeah, thank you, everybody, for being on our show. We appreciate it. So we are very excited to get started. Um, one, a great timing from um, Rob. Um, good morning, Rob, Rob Tracy. Um, so, so morning. far we've got G and uh, Chris G, Rob Tracy mm -hmm. have uh, checked in in the chat. I uh, want to encourage our um, audience to uh, please continue to populate the chat if you have questions for our guests. 
Yes. Uh, please add those as well. We have some questions, of course, and we're going to get started with those. Um, so hey to Andrew, but uh, we'll go ahead and get started with our first question. And we'll just kind of do this round robin, whoever mm -hmm. wants to take the question. But first up, um, what makes dance and music teaching so unique? And why don't we start with, we'll start with Amy. Sure. We'll, 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 play the, we'll play the hierarchy a little bit here. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. Well, my pleasure. I, I, for me, the uniqueness of the art. <laughs> yeah, Brian, I need you to be happy about that. Um, is that um, it's so much about relationships. And boy, mm. do we need relationships now more than ever. Mm -hmm. And um, it's also about creativity. I think through uh, music and dance, kids can express themselves in so many unique ways that make bonds that can last a lifetime. So it's just these rich experiences that really are unique to music and dance um, that propel kids to stay in for a lifetime, you know, and, and just be able to contribute in ways that are amazing. Mm, I like that. Yes. Contribute to the ways that are amazing. And I like to stay for a lifetime. I think that's very important. Um, because I think of, you know, how many classes we've taken or courses, you take the course, you put it down, you forget about it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I do. I, I, and I love talking to music teachers and asking, when did you get involved in uh, music or uh, dance education? And it usually starts like with elementary. So I, I mm -hmm. certainly can appreciate that comment. Mm -hmm. So, um, Brian, how about you? What's your, what's your thought? Sure. Uh, and um, I'll add to what Amy said, uh, because I agree with it 100 mm -hmm. percent. Um, one of the things I think that is amazing about uh, music and dance uh, and learning uh, through music and dance um, and the other art forms, for that matter, um, is its authenticity. So mm -hmm. in uh, many other school subjects that we learn in, um, we we uh, dissect, we we take apart and then we sequence up to the authentic act of doing science or doing math. Um, and in our art forms, we're learning in a holistic sense in ways that are appropriate to a given uh, developmental level. I won't even say age level or grade level, um, but you know, a, a kindred art nurse starts uh, learning to sing by singing. They mm -hmm. learn to, mm -hmm. to dance mm -hmm. by dancing. Right. And I think that's one thing that really makes um, uh, our art forms uh, both uh, worthy of uh, study within uh, a complete school curriculum, but then also um, uh, extremely attractive um, to students um, in terms of their uh, schooling. I like that authenticity, authenticity. piece. Yeah, yes. that's a great word. Yeah, and like that's you said, they got to do it, right? It's, it's they mm -hmm. learn to sing by singing. Mm -hmm. um, I love that that progression you talked about in comparison to other contents, perhaps. Mm -hmm. And Sonia, how about you? You want to weigh in on this? Yeah, well, you know, it's a yes and um, from everything <laughs> we've heard from Emily and Brian. But um, in terms of the dance perspective, you know, you add that kind of physical manifestation of learning. So it's not just learning, um, you know, through creative lens or are implying that creativity, but also the physical body and the mind body connection. So mm -hmm. those two things are um, so important for all um, humans. And as we heard Doug say at the beginning, if you can move, you can dance. So it's that. Um, just getting students moving and connecting to their physical self mm -hmm. is a huge um, learning piece for um, dance instruction and dance education. And um, through what we do in Baltimore County, um, we really strive to be the non-competitive option. So you know, that yeah. dance is something that is an art form. Um, so mm -hmm. the fine arts aspect of learning about all types of dance and how who dances and how you dance, um, as opposed to the competitive nature that dance sometimes brings. Oh, fascinating. Yeah. Lovely, I don't lovely. know if I agree that everybody knows how to dance, but that's a totally different story. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that some other time, but I like the <laughs> whole mind body. Dance teachers, then. See, that's where I always go with that. There you Good go. Nice, there, you go. Nice. there you go. I'm just you thinking of the, the beer. <laughs> I'm just thinking of the Seinfeld Elaine episode of which she's dancing. So that's all I'm thinking about. So okay, everybody has to start somewhere. Sonia can take you from there. Yeah, thank right. you. Right. Thank that's you. that's where you. that's where Elaine started, right? She she needed to deal with, you know, there you Sonia go. And, and I'm not saying I don't know how to dance, but you know, that's a different story. So really quick before we move on, Andrew says opportunities for student expression, opportunities to have difficult conversations about social issues in our world history. Uh everything. Yes, Andrew, absolutely, because you know, we communicate through music. Everything is through music and the arts as well. And good morning to you too, Shane. Shout out to Shane. Yes. Morning, Shane. Yes. So we want to know, so we're talking about what makes dance and teaching unique. 
what we would like to know is how did you choose this profession and why? And this time, how about we just start from Sonia? Great. <laughs> and then move on up. <laughs> um, I, you know, I think many others might say, but it's definitely my truth that I felt like this profession chose me, you know, so um, just having experiences, mm -hmm. right, having experiences as a young child. Um, my mother was a music educator. Um, mm. We sang, we danced in the home, you know, it was a big part. Um, that's one thing we like to do as a family is, you know, learn songs and play them and sing. So I just grew up um, taking piano lessons from my mom and, um, yeah, singing all the time. And um, I just, then the teaching piece just seemed to be natural because um, mm -hmm. I had a model for that. And so as a young adult, I was choreographing for my peers and uh, working with other students and just doing that process. Um, and it was one of those, you know, when you love something, you really want to see it manifest and keep going and continuing. And so um, anyway, you can kind of dig in to uh, the content that has brought so much joy to your life. Mm. Um, and that's, you know, been my journey. Thank you. Brian? And so, uh, yes, and. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I became engaged uh, really in music in high school. Um, I, I really um, wanted to be the next greatest trumpet player in the universe. Um, you know, uh, through college, it was really um, digging into my music education classes um, and certainly student teaching when I uh, really found that I loved children and um, loved working with children. Um, I really wanted that uh, top flight performing ensemble, um, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, that high school performing ensemble that, you know, did great things and, you know, did all the great concerts and all that stuff. Um, and it was really um, my move from upstate New York, where I'm a native to uh, Arizona, where I worked in a, a oh. school um, for the first time with predominantly students of color um, and lower uh, socioeconomics when I realized not every kid had the same opportunity that I did. Um, and so uh, I, I kind of found my calling that way in terms of working with those populations um, and then moving back uh, to the right coast uh, to Maryland. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, uh, my last teaching was in Baltimore City, um, where I really, um, you know, kind of fought that battle in earnest. And that's also when I stepped into administration. Mm -hmm. And the thing that really drew me to administration was that I could advocate for students um, having those opportunities no matter where they grew up or what they looked like. I love it. I love it. And people are responding yeah, similar are to what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. So Brian, you know what you said, you're also making a lasting legacy and that's how other teachers become teachers of that lasting legacy. And Miss Cohn? Yes. How did, you, how did you choose this profession and why? Wow. So Sonia and I have so much in common and, mm -hmm. you know, I was thinking about this and I don't really think there was ever a choice. I guess there had to be mm -hmm. a conscious choice at some point. So I also grew up in a very musical family. Um, my mom was a music teacher for many years in Maryland and she taught piano. She was uh, a church organist and, oh. and we moved a lot growing up. My father was in pharmaceuticals, but he he also grew up with music. He was um, in Pennsylvania Allstate. He was the first tenor and I still have his Allstate pin. And so, you know, <laughs> it was just a natural that I was involved in church music from a very young age. I think Silent Night, I sang that at two <laughs> in church. That was my Aww. premier song. Um, and I, I was always in every musical group I could be. I was in band and chorus all the way up through high school, marching band, college marching band. I just love music. But I think the turning point for me was really when I was in middle school and this might surprise my team, but um, I was a troublemaker and um, <gasps> no, I was, I was, uh, detention was my friend. I was very chatty. I could always see it in your eyes, Amy. Whenever I looked at you, I'm like, she was <laughs> trouble behind those I, eyes. I, yes. I still get in trouble sometimes, <laughs> but Doug, Doug tries to help me still, but it really was my um, band teacher. Um, Mr. Long, who kind of really roped me in and made sure that, you know, I was staying straight <laughs> on the course. And from that, I was so appreciative um, that I really decided once later in life, I, I needed to give back. And, and I kind of feel like I need to save some kids. And mm, I still feel it. like I do. I, I feel like the mom of all the kids in Baltimore County, like if I don't advocate, who's going to mm, advocate for them? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of the parenting in me. So I don't have kids of my own. But right. I consider my team and, and all of our teachers and kids my family. So, Aww, yeah. I love it. Well, right. Christina's saying, honey, if you ain't got pictures, it didn't happen. Yeah, so, the receipts, I don't know. Right? <laughs> I know, where are the receipts? <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. So, this is why we love these conversations. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Right. I, I mean, I thought I knew some, you know, Amy and I've had several conversations about her past. This, this is new information, though. You never saw the trouble <laughs> in her eyes like Doug. You could look at her and say, mm, she's got that. <laughs> we've we've, we've closed the door a few times and had some discussion. <laughs> Amy's all making sense now. I still get out of the bag now. I try not to, but I still get in trouble. Hey, you know what they say? How do they say? Um, where is it? Something about women who don't who don't cause trouble don't make history. Oh, you know? oh. So keep that in mind. Good. Women who don't cause trouble don't make history. Just true. Okay. So there you go. <laughs> thank you. You're very welcome. Well, and then uh, thank you again for those in the chat. Please keep the mm -hmm. comments coming. Um, so uh, next question. Uh, kind of related to this one um, about mm -hmm. tell us about your journey as a teacher. And Brian, you touched on some of that. Um, I will ask that you go first. Mm -hmm. uh, as you expanded on some of the, you know, as you went from state to state, but I um, want to hear from you and from, um, you know, uh, Amy and Sonia, what, tell us about that journey as a teacher, some highlights and things that really stuck with. Sure. So um, this is my 23rd year in public education. Um, I started out uh, teaching uh, elementary instrumental music uh, mm. and teaching team teaching third grade general music. I've, I've got to do some, uh, you know, creds for some of the folks in the room. <laughs> um, that, that school is on waterfront property in upstate New York on Lake mm. Champlain. Um, okay. So um, as such, um, I saw a good bit of privilege every day mm. in one form or the other. Mm. Um, uh, I, uh, I then uh, met my now wife um, and we uh, moved uh, temporarily to Arizona. Uh, which where I um, taught uh, kindergarten through eighth grade general music and chorus. Mm. Um, and it really kind of uh, opened my eyes to kind of the one, the bigger picture of music education. So at that, until mm. that point, I was an instrumental music teacher. I was an instrumentalist uh, and I was happy in my little bubble, but this really kind of broke me out of that shell. Um, coming back to the East Coast, so I did that for three years. Coming back to the East Coast then, um, I was predominantly a uh, middle school and high school instrumental teacher in Baltimore City. Mm. Um, and it was not that high flying, uh, you know, grade six uh, wind ensemble um, that, uh, you know, I had initially hoped for, but um, the, the impact that um, and, and the, the bonds that I had with the children there, um, you know, going back, um, you know, 10 years now, um, you know, are still alive today. Um, and they're, they're doing wonderful things, uh, but it really kind of opened my eyes to, you know, the need for um, access regardless of where they are. Mm. Mm. Actually, mm -hmm. yep. All, always key. Cause we're talking about the richness of the experience you can have the music and dance. But like you said, as a student, if I can't access that experience, then right. That, that frankly means nothing to me. And, but it could, yes. as you all pointed out before, it could mean, you know, a lifetime of passion and, Mm -hmm. and love for for this for the art form so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wonderful let's go to um, i guess we can go what amy want to go next and sure. then we'll have Sonia. Sonia mm -hmm. chime in. Mm -hmm. sure well 29 years ago almost to the day i started teaching at arbutus middle school oh. rolling road special school and woodmore elementary school i had three schools and yet i was still a 0.8 employee so mm. I had wow. a really challenging first year, um, but I survived. And I think it really made me so much stronger and ready for other opportunities. Mm -hmm. The second year I became full-time at Arbutus Middle and I was there for a total of eight years. And um, then I moved over to Howard County for a great um, teaching opportunity at the elementary level. I wanted to really round out my experiences. So I stayed there for five years teaching elementary vocal music, which I loved. I still love, love, love. Um, and from there, um, I was working on my master's degree and a, a, an opportunity came up to become coordinator of music in uh, Anne Arundel County Public Schools. I thought, well, let's take this interview. Mm -hmm. That's my long-term <laughs> goal and I should be there in five to eight years and I won the position. And uh, so I stayed there uh, for 10 years. So my teaching really was 13 years be okay. before becoming a coordinator. I was also a night school principal when I was in um, Baltimore yeah. County at mm. Lansdowne High School. Rob Tracy, I think you know that. Um, <laughs> so I really, I love the Southwest. Um, that was okay. my love in, uh, and I still have a little special spot for mm. the Southwest, just because of the families and the community that mm -hmm. took such good care of me. Mm. Uh, and now all the schools are my school. I teach in all schools. Yes. Love it. That's <laughs> a great, nice. well, interesting journey and in how you said you had that plan and you know put it in the universe and it, it, it became reality. So yeah. very awesome. Sonia. Yeah. 
So uh, teaching career began in 2003 and I started as an elementary vocal music teacher um, mm -hmm. in Baltimore City. So I taught at two Northwest um, elementary schools, Windsor Hills and Callaway. And I taught elementary music, but of course I had um, the students dancing at lunch and dancing anytime we could be dancing. We were moving <laughs> and we were doing as much um, as we could in the time that I was there. Um, then I moved to Anne Arundel County where I taught elementary vocal general music at Jessup Elementary and more dancing happened in that district and um, <laughs> partnership with Mead High School and neighboring feeder schools to um, engage those students. And then in 2007, I moved to Baltimore County at Patapsco High School and Center for the Arts, where mm. I was one of two um, on the dance faculty and held that position until I moved into the music and dance office as the resource teacher and have been here since 2012. So mm. uh, love i'm duly certified in music and dance i have a love for both and a passion for teaching you know in in all forms and i always did see myself as a dance teacher eventually so i was just kind of moving myself um you know into that path mm -hmm. thank you well that takes us to the next question because you spoke about your role describe your role as a resource teacher coordinator and supervisor because i'm sure people want to know what's the difference uh, what are the responsibilities? <coughs> Excuse me. So what are, describe your role to us. Sure. As a resource teacher, um, I, I service and support and um, any, anything dance <laughs> so <laughs> is where that kind of falls. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, I really help to, to service our 36 dance teachers in the county um, K through 12. So we have um, a growing uh, crew of dance mm -hmm. teachers and that, is professional development, curriculum development, support, um, coaching, all forms of support for dance. And then working, of course, with an awesome team to do support outside of dance um, mm -hmm. with uh, music and dance content. Wonderful. So that's resource teacher. Next is let's do supervisor. Sure. Uh, so as a supervisor, um, I we all kind of have our uh, responsibilities uh, within the curriculum. So I'm predominantly things instrumental music, elementary, um, up through um, at the secondary level. Um, I'm really a, a band person. And so uh, Shane, who's uh, in our audience, but uh, mm -hmm. not uh, present right now, um, is our orchestral person. Mm -hmm. um, so we have those um, high school music and audio technology. Um, you know, we support um, curriculum development, instructional support. Um, I'm predominantly uh, the person in charge of purchasing in the office, um, okay. as well as um, software deployment and approval processes. Um, you know, uh, we all kind of uh, uh, team tackle uh, professional development opportunities, such as our professional study day today. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, as well as serve as coordinator on um, uh, some of our long list of enrichment activities. And so we, we kind of uh, provide that workout as well. Wonderful. And Amy, you are the coordinator. I am. So mm -hmm. I have the pleasure of keeping our staff family together, making sure everybody has what they need, mm -hmm. um, the, collaborating with Doug and the other directors and coordinators in um, putting some common practices in place, making sure that we fit in with the BCPS vision and that we are um, doing cross uh, collaborations with other offices, that um, we are making sure to advocate for all of our children in the district to make sure they have equal access and opportunity to music and dance. We advocate for all the, all the arts, but since I'm only music and dance, I'll, I'll just speak to that right now. But, mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, to build relationships with, with, um, not only the colleagues, but with our um, teachers. So making mm -hmm. sure that teachers have what they need. So um, it really is an office that um, works with synergy. We really work off each other um, and have built such strong relationships over the five years that I've been here. And um, it's, it's just an exciting uh, opportunity when you're in the office. And as a coordinator, you get to really see the big view, the the 10,000 foot view of what's, mm -hmm. what's happening. And, you know, not only in our district, but in other districts. So I do a lot of collaboration with other district leaders as well. Oh, okay. Wonderful. One, one thing I want to add before we move to the next question, I know um, having the pleasure of attending, you know, several music and dance performances and have been allowed to actually MC and say a few things. Um, just love how the team just comes together. And it's mm -hmm. our three guests and Shane um, included. Uh, just, you know, I, I usually just someone there to greet me. And then next thing you know, the whole team's there. 
and they do, they bond together. And sometimes we even have some family members helping out, right? Right, Brian? So. <laughs> my my <laughs> you know, children are great stand uh, folders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, they are. So just how the, the team comes together to collaborate, to really do all the work that you just heard described uh, through music and dance instruction Love for it. BCPS. And then, right, they, they certainly, as you heard from their bios, have an impact on uh, really statewide mm -hmm and nationwide um, as well. So really, mm -hmm. really proud of the work they've been doing. Um, we're going to do a little, a couple of comments because some of them are amazing, great that we'd like to share. So G, in response to you, Amy, I knew you were trouble when you walked in. <laughs> oh, okay, G, you, you're starting to trouble right there. Rob says good trouble. Good, yes, good trouble, of course. And we also, yes. And then mm -hmm. Rob is still asking, you are Lansdowne. Mm -hmm. He didn't know that see, a lot of learning um, yeah. see, there you go and again show me the money brian <laughs> so winston is agreeing with dr logan so i love talking about synergy here's all the synergy with all the comments as well so yes, that yes. is awesome so um last week we had new educators orientation and uh, we know that we all remember being that first year teacher right or mm -hmm. and and you all have talked about how you've moved from you know one uh district to another so uh Let's let's focus on those our new educators for a minute. What advice mm -hmm. would you give new educators uh, at this point in their career? Mm -hmm. um, and why don't we start with yeah? Anybody can jump in. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I was thinking about this, um, you know, uh, early this morning. That's what my good brain time. As many of my colleagues who get ridiculously early morning emails from me now. <laughs> um, but um, I really thought about three things. Number one, given our current environment, be flexible. Yes. Um, and and so, you know, we're all, you know, outside of kind of how we were trained in teacher school, uh, including me, uh, by the way. And I've been doing this for 23 years. And, um, you know, Amy, you know, we have these conversations and she's been doing it for 29 years. And mm -hmm. so uh, you know, just be flexible with what you're doing and how you're doing it. And you know, uh, keep that in mind when uh, interacting with children and with your colleagues, because mm -hmm. uh, they also need to be flexible because this is generally new for them as well. Mm -hmm. um, second one was take time to build those relationships, um, both uh, with your kids uh, and with the people uh, in your mm -hmm. building, um, but really get to know those folks in, in ways you might, uh, you know, it might serve as a challenge in our current environment, um, but otherwise might be, you know, popping into their classroom. So is it a, I don't know, a Zoom happy hour, um, of course, with, you know, um, juice and soda. Um, but, you know, what are those ways that you can really, you know, make those connections within your building? And the last one, jump in. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, teaching is not uh, a nine to five job. Right. And, um, you know, uh, those early career years can really kind of form the foundation for the rest of your career. Um, I like to say that in my first six or seven years, I didn't say no. <laughs> um, right. it, it was really, you know, it was whether it was, you know, dinner with a with a, a senior colleague up the street. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, I, I started in a rural area, so it was really finding those connections. You know, where here in Baltimore County, you know, you can drive a mile in any direction and find somebody who does what you do and usually pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, but really uh, getting involved in that professional culture, you know, here we have this embarrassment of riches of a huge district, mm -hmm. um, but we also have the embarrassment of cultural riches, you know, whether that's, you know, uh, taking your instrument or your voice part somewhere and doing that when you're able to. Mm -hmm. um, and um, just really uh, immersing yourself in that um, professional culture and understanding uh, where you might want to eventually land within that. I love it. Thank you. And when you said jump in, I was actually listening to Van Halen this morning jump. So that really came to mind. Speaking of music. I love awesome. That. that ties into the artist question too. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Although I, I prefer Van Halen with Sammy Hagar. That's up for debate. <laughs> what advice would you give to you teachers? Well, um, one thing Came, rose to the top for me in terms of this question. And I was just thinking um, it's especially true for new teachers, but carries through is to celebrate small victories. So mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. oftentimes um, new teachers, they get 
they may get really upset That's with the progress that they're making or mm -hmm. the impact that they're having. And um, so just being able to say, wow, you know, this one student turned on their camera today and I actually saw them or this student logged in. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, those small <laughs> victories are so important and the right. teacher is has that impact, you know, can mm -hmm. make that um, can really connect in that way. So, um, you know, we the, in terms of song lyrics, um, I Will Survive comes to mind. Mm -hmm. but, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> you know, it's like, see, see, see it through to the end. We can do right. this. It's a lot right. of that positivity. But um, yeah, just trying to get celebrations along the way. That's great. Yeah, that's so such a good piece of advice. Because like you said, people want to see the larger picture and these little things are what make it happen. Mm hmm. Ms. Cohn. Yes. So I would say, um, I, I love what my colleagues have said, of course. Um, mm -hmm. I really feel like you need to be an open book um, when you start just to be learning. You're reading, you're learning as much as you can as a sponge to get lots of ideas before you decide which route you want to take. And I think you need to have patience and forgiveness for yourself. Mm -hmm. You're going to make mistakes. Oh my goodness. The mistakes I made my first year were serious. Um, I took myself way too seriously and, and, and also stayed, stayed isolated. And I think Brian talked about that. That's, I guess that would probably be, um, the best advice is to connect with us, connect mm. with everybody that's around you and try to learn as much as you can, but be open and honest, be that open book to, to learn. I, I love Christy's uh, um, comment about none of us know everything. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. sometimes new teachers do believe they know it all. And uh -huh. I have not met one yet that knows it all. So hopefully uh, that can change. <laughs> right. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, and it's been said before, like Christina said, right, for this year, we're all new teachers, right? None of us have taught in this format under these circumstances. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to acknowledge that that newness. And there's a you know, bunch of comments, um, mm -hmm. like I said, Shane, definitely giving um, giving mm -hmm. kudos to the comments, bravos. Uh, I know I know this was advice um, as much as like painting the picture of reality. I remember my first year, um, it was the summer before I started teaching. Mm -hmm. um, and I was taking my certification classes at Baltimore City Community College. I was a career changer. And one of the professors for the course, um, actually was one of my classmates, she said, look, your first year, you're going to you're gonna want to quit every day. Mm -hmm. She was yes. like, your, your second year, you're going to want to quit every week. And she was like, <laughs> well, your third year, you should you should be able to kind of see it through for at least, you know, a few months at a time. So uh, wow. that comes to mind for me. And then um, I know at one point, Rob just threw up patience. Right. And then Sonia mm -hmm. kind of expounded upon that. But um, it's just it's a very special time. Um, toughest career I've ever embarked on, the mm -hmm. most rewarding career I've ever embarked on. There's nothing mm -hmm. like being a teacher in the classroom. Yes. Uh, so new educators, please hope you're you're listening to what's being said um, here on, on, on stage with our guests, if you will, and then also in the chat, because uh, I saw we got a lot of comments. Folks are mm -hmm. ready to share. And then you yeah, rely on your community. It's, it's absolutely mm -hmm. essential. Yeah, absolutely you're, essential. you're not an island. Which leads us to our next question. What would you tell your first year teacher self now that you've been in education for many years? Brian is like, hmm. <laughs> Since you have that look, Brian, we're going to start with you. <laughs> no, dear, dear young Brian. Dear oh, young, oh, yes. <laughs> I appreciate that opportunity. Um, <laughs> the first thing I would tell myself is relax. Um, mm. uh, you know, Amy said that she took herself very seriously, as did I uh, in that uh, time. And I, I really took personally uh, the sounds that were coming out of my ensembles. Mm. Um, and, and um, you know, uh, <laughs> perhaps at the expense of uh, being able to connect with my students as fully uh, in my community as fully as perhaps I wanted to in the name of teaching kids all the stuff that they needed. So I was a fifth grade uh, band director, uh, which is kind of an old designation at this mm -hmm. point. Um, and I, I wanted those kids ready to go to middle school dominating and, um, you know, really kind of a coaching mentality to that. Um, and so, um, you know, uh, I'd, I'd also tell myself then that um, those uh, connections that you missed uh, are, are pretty important. So start with those. <laughs> um, and that yeah. uh, your students, um, even, you know, at the time, you know, I'm teaching on waterfront property, um, mm -hmm. you know, with students who predominantly look like I do, mm -hmm. um, although from very different backgrounds than I came from, um, that, um, you know, uh, they're still all coming from different places um, with different backgrounds and different um, different needs. 
Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you need to pay attention to those and uh, to nurture those uh, as much as you're nurturing those um, the musicians. Love mm. it. Nurturing, I like that. Very nice, yes. Connect over the connections. Sonia or Amy, what would you tell your first year self? I mean, I'm happy to go, mm -hmm. if that's all right. Sure. Okay. Yeah, great. So, um, dear Sonia, um, no, I was, <laughs> I, I say this to new teachers as they come in now, and I just, in reflection on my first year, it's, it's you know, getting kids excited and experiencing uh, music and dance is the most important thing. So I think, mm -hmm. the, you know, new teacher, it's getting caught up in the perfect lesson and the perfect mm -hmm. um, year plan and the making sure uh, that what's on paper is really working. And it's not about what's on paper. It's about what happens in your classroom and what experiences you can engage students in and how you can build that for your students and the excitement around what you're doing. So sometimes that means that, you know, what is designed may not perfectly work for your classroom. And it's that's okay because you have um, the ability to to change and to make that relevant for the students. So um, I would just tell, you know, first year Sonia, it's, it, you know, try just keep trying and keep engaging keep them moving keep them singing keep them dancing it's you know that's the important piece like to, to just peel everything else away mm. great all right Trouble. First, Trouble. first year amy right first year amy <laughs> um, i would stop tell her <laughs> yeah stop making trouble um <laughs> Because now it's revenge time. The kids are making trouble in your classroom. Right? <laughs> karma. It was karma. But I <laughs> I think I would say don't take it personally. Um, mm -hmm. The kids are going to challenge you. They know a new, a new teacher from far, far away. And it is part of their fabric mm -hmm. to challenge. And that's just for some people like myself in the first year, that was hard to accept. You, mm. you know, I, I really wanted control of my classroom. So I would say, you're not gonna have control. You're going to move towards having better routines and relationships that allow you to bring kids in and engage them, but don't think that you're going to have that perfect classroom that perhaps you dreamed of. So that, mm -hmm. that patient, that rea patient's reality check. And, and I always tell new teachers, the first year will be your hardest year. It mm -hmm. will never be that hard again. Right. Yeah. True. Good so point. we had some comments as well, relationships, connections. Christina made an interesting comment. Yeah. Your first year, Christy, go home and breathe. <laughs> You'll never get all of the things done, especially if you aren't taking care of yourself. Now that part, this part is really kind of, cause I'm an elephant lover. How do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Let's not eat my elephant. So, <laughs> it's an expression. I know, I get what you're saying, <laughs> but that's good. Go home and breathe, Actually, absolutely. Yeah. You're never, there's always something to do. Mm -hmm. You will always have something to do. So thank yes. you for the advice. <laughs> yes. So before our next question, I do. Um, I see Rob's been very active. Um, yes. It's going to take a little bit of a detour. So Rob's asking about when are we going to build a guitar together with CTE? And I'm going to tell you, I, right, you see Amy giving a thumbs up. So hopefully you all know about, like, we have our elementary music carts, right? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> one, one thing, and I, I'm almost, I say this almost every year. It's like, uh like, how did I get this job, right? You know, so I have fine arts and CTE. Like, are there any better content? And I would ask the students, you, you know, the way students find their passions in these content areas that I have the pleasure of working with. Um, and and we, we know the, 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 the social studies is, of course, the foundation yes. of back all of track, these areas. These are, track, these are all track. social studies, right? <laughs> You are outnumbered up here. So just, just, just. I'm not scared, as the kids would say. <laughs> <laughs> Bring them out. <laughs> but as we often like to say, this is not about a beer and me. Uh, we backstage, we make them. sure <laughs> we straighten things up. Yes. Uh, but no, but, and, 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 you know, with CTE, we do talk about applying other coursework. Um, mm -hmm. A beer and I have talked about social studies courses mm -hmm. across, across everything. Um, and then I look at, you know, fine arts and CT that allow students to uh, explore their passions mm -hmm. um, that oftentimes do turn into these trajectories uh, yes. for their careers. Mm -hmm. And um, so, Rob, just want to make sure I didn't, you know, I did not miss your point. Uh, we actually um, had a course, I think it's still taught a couple of places, um, advanced technical applications where students actually made musical instruments. Um, Ooh, so um, awesome. I, I hear you. I see you. I'm going to reconvene <laughs> with, with the team. 
um, the, the music team and I will reconvene with CTE and we'll continue to collaborate. But we've got yeah. what music bars, uh, dance, I'm sorry, dance bars, uh, collaboration. So we, we love the collaboration. And it's just like mm-hmm. we're like our own little workshop here in CTE and Fine Arts, just doing all sorts of wonderful things. And we actually even made something for social studies, I believe, a beer. We made some placards, I think, for you know. United Nations, model United Nations or something. So we, oh, yeah, we, that is true. Y'all do, do you know, those little thingies, of course. Yeah, so if, you're, if you're ever <laughs> looking for them, yes, if you need some <laughs> musical performances or anything to set the tone, I'm pretty sure we I have a uh, capability to do that, too. So um, we will get back to our regularly scheduled yes. programming. Got a couple of comments. <laughs> <laughs> I have Sharon. Thank you, Sister, from another Mister. I appreciate the backing. Um, you know, people are saying be, be flexible and LHS has both carpentry and electrical. Let's write. Yeah. Yes. And, and I yep. do agree. I'm not knocking. Um, I love elephants. Too, I know. <laughs> um, I do agree, though, especially in arts and music. I mean, as I said, I'm not artistically inclined at all, but I have children who are. My middle child is a wonderful artist. And that actually came out in high school because she had a wonderful art teacher. Mm-hmm. So that she was able to express herself. So I think it's similar. I'm not, you know, as social studies, I'm, I'm protective, but I do believe that you can't live your life without the amazing music and art that you can create and how that really does bring out the uniqueness in every single student and yep. every single person. So yeah, it's like <laughs> human expression, right? I mean, yeah. we're right. As humans, we, yep. right, we this is how we were made. Yeah. You know, that's how cultures and civilizations thrive. Yes, yeah. So I'm just, so just talking individual yes. Yes. I, know. Yeah, I just like Thank to, you, you know, for like right. <laughs> and then new educators, you saw, right. You saw how Sharon came to a beers back, right. Yes. In their parts, Ohio days. Like you said, form that community. Very important. Yes, that's Very important. right. That's right. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so we, we've talked a lot about, uh, you know, like the journeys that our guests have had and about mm-hmm. how they've learned to build relationships with students. So talk to us about how, um, how can music and dance be equalizer for all mm-hmm. students? Um, yes. And we'll just um, go ahead and whoever's feeling ready to jump in. We'll mm-hmm. I sense Brian, as I can tell. <laughs> well, my poker face stinks. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I alluded to this a little bit uh, at the beginning, um, and and Doug, you mentioned a little bit about this, um, you know, just uh, a couple seconds ago in, in your comments. Um, music and dance um, are, are, they they comprise and are comprised by culture, mm-hmm. number one. Um, and so they are extensions of our culture, um, but uh, that that can serve as equalizers because uh, everyone within our culture knows what's within our culture. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Number one, um, but number two, um, you know, there there are unique ways of knowing how to and knowing about that um, are standing contrast to the to the other academic subjects in that. Uh, you know, you're you're doing something within it. Right. You're you're creating. You're performing. You're interacting with with the art form in in ways that are not necessarily fostered in others. Like, and I'm sorry to say this, Abir, social studies. No, nope. go um, for it. Um, while while there's certain while those two uh, areas certainly impact one another, mm-hmm. um, the, the the proficiency or or skill within them uh, are are not the same. Correct. And, mm-hmm. and as mm-hmm. such, very uh, different. You, Students who may be successful in one may not be successful in the other. Correct. So the arts can equalize uh, an academic playing field by providing those unique ways of knowing and doing uh, that uh, folks in other, you know, the other third that are really tested uh, and assessed uh, may not necessarily show through. Okay. Mm. I like that. And Uh, it's true. Yeah, there are various content and skill sets as well. And some kids thrive in one and not the other. I yeah, totally agree with that one. I'm, I'll, I'll take the, the hits for that. <laughs> <laughs> with with all due respect and love. Of course. I love it. Love it. Amy, Sonia? Sure, I'll go. Um, just thinking back to something uh, that we led the program with, you know, if you can uh, move, you can dance. And if you can talk, you can sing. You know, mm-hmm. there's that that great, one of my favorite Christmas movies. Um, my dad's watching the program right now, so he will enjoy Very this, nice. is Elf. 
And in the, in the segment of Elf, you know, we, you know, Will Ferrell says, and I'm singing, I am talking, but I am singing. You know, but the equalizer is that oh I my truly God, that's too funny. Believe, I, I think you've seen the movie, I sense it. Um, that, you know, I think the fifth. <laughs> I really believe, and I, I know my team believes this too, that, you know, this is an equal opportunity for everybody to learn. Um, everybody mm. can dance to a varying degree. If you can move, I really do believe you can dance. Uh, even if it's a matter of hands, right, Sonia? We like hands and dancing. Mm -hmm. And yes, um, yeah. certainly singing, we're all equipped with a voice you know, and can use it to, to sing. So I think it, there's no reason for, for any human not to engage in um, music or dance. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's the foundation of why it's an equalizer because right. everybody is welcome. Come on in. <laughs> Wonderful. I yeah, and I can I can definitely add on to that thought. Um, one of my favorite stories in hearing about you know first year dance programs in Baltimore County and new dance programs is hearing either the teaching staff or the administration just say you know now that we have these dance classes, I am seeing students um, perform and connect and be more visible in the school building that I never mm -hmm. would have seen before. It's like it's they're finding mm -hmm. something that they um, feel comfortable doing and showcasing and being a part of and so that there's this sense of community that equalizes in my opinion it, it brings them in and, and makes them feel comfortable right away mm -hmm. and if it weren't there you know what would they be doing you know what would they would almost be you know kind of a little bit lost in the shuffle so I just I think that's so powerful to hear those stories um, and you know thinking of dance and music as their own languages you know, so there's like a a nonverbal language in dance mm -hmm. that's not always the spoken, you know, a written language and um, just how that can sometimes be an equalizer as well. Just that use of nonverbal communication um, that's a little bit different than maybe in other content areas mm -hmm. um, since we're not relying on uh, the spoken or written word always mm -hmm. uh, certainly are using it and um, and and developing it. Um, so that's something I think of as well. And just collaboration in general. So, you know, every, everyone's ideas, everyone's thoughts, everyone's contribute contributing to this larger thing, you know, this, mm -hmm. this music or dance um, uh, event or piece or video as it may be this year. So there's something about that collaboration mm -hmm. as well. I think the other aspect, like if we're comparing it to contents, is music and dance is also interpretation. Mm -hmm. You know, well, like, for yeah. example, social studies, you know, sometimes it's cut and dry. This is what the interpretation is. This is what the meaning is. And this <laughs> reminds me of my daughter and I were listening to Erica Badu's song, Bag Lady. And for the longest time, this is my dumb interpretation. I always thought she was talking about a homeless woman. Right. Mm -hmm. My daughter looks at me. She's like, no, mama, she's talking about a woman who has all the baggage mm -hmm. and that, you know, and that was my interpretation. But just how cool it was to have that conversation. And you can have that with music and dance where one person looks at it one way, of course, based on the artist of what their interpretation is. But you can listen to music and you take it in, in a totally different perspective. And, you know, we we were speaking to Will Wells last night about him and how he uses adjectives to describe instruments and how he's creating music. So I think that's what makes music and dance so unique is also based on that interpretation. So, but Erica Badu, I'm so sorry if I totally butchered your song, but that's what I thought, <laughs> you know, it, it was. But I, I love that point, um, Abir, because, you know, like you said, the artist has one thing in mind when they create the, the music or the right. song or the dance. Mm -hmm. And then as a consumer, you know, and as someone who's in the audience or receiving, you know, what does that mean to me? So right. for some reason, that's what that song meant to you, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I, I, you know, to me, that's that's your truth. That's valid. And I think that's the beauty of art, right? Mm -hmm. um, I know, um, I think Chuck D from Public Enemy, his response on art is like, an artist's job is to get the get a reaction. Mm -hmm. it, it not, not that you love the art, not that you hate right. the art, not, you know, but that you react to, to what the artist has presented. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those reactions certainly vary, so. And we know um, he always got a reaction. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's, he did. He did. He's doing well, has done yes. well with that. So yes. a couple more questions, just being mindful of time. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so talking is really related to this, but you talked about um, music and culture, dance and culture. How can music and dance be used to share cultures? Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking um, whether it's the artists that you're teaching about or whether it's the students of uh, mm -hmm. cultures and teach empathy um, to our students. 
And Amy, why don't we have you start with this? We'll go through mm -hmm. the the. Absolutely. <laughs> well, we all know that Baltimore County, you know, is so rich and diverse um, mm -hmm. with cultures, and we work very hard to help our students see themselves in instruction. And by doing that, we need to expose our, our students to so many cultural dances, um, music from all different um, styles, uh, places of origin, and that brings people together because we have so many families that are different than mm -hmm. me that right. can contribute to what music and dance look like in Baltimore County and, and beyond. And that empathy comes really when we're making that music together and, and we can understand what, it, what it's like to be another person mm -hmm. in that dance. And it might not, like Doug said, it might not be what you like, but you understand <laughs> what they're trying to convey and you mm -hmm. have an appreciation for the value they place on that. So you're really standing with them together. And I think the arts, because you're often in large groups trying to synthesize ideas together, that you can have an appreciation for each other mm -hmm. that's deeper than other content areas. areas. Mm -hmm. I like that, I like that. Uh, Brian, how about you? So uh, thinking big picture, um, music and dance uh, have done this uh, throughout human history. Mm -hmm. uh, I would dare say that they're human constructs that were uh, invented, if you will, uh, to, to do exactly what you're talking about, share mm -hmm. cultures and teach empathy. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think from a, um, a curricular technical standpoint, uh, empathy can also come within the collective experience. Um, of a group. Amy talked about uh, conveying artistic ideas, but it could also come from within in terms of everyone kind of struggling to uh, master certain skills or uh, to be effective in conveying those ideas um, and understanding that that is not an easy thing to do right. <laughs> at all. Um, and um, you know, uh, my uh, limited skills within dance, uh, we don't have to talk about that right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but but uh, my ability to, to communicate um, and uh, perform technical accuracy um, is uh, very limited compared to my uh, ability as a musician. Mm. Um, and so, uh, so I have uh, an incredible appreciation um, uh, within the dance culture of the things that they're doing um, at a very high level. Um, knowing that they had to struggle through that together. Mm. I love that collective piece. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, Amy mentioned it, Brian mentioned it. It's true. Is mm -hmm. that right? Yeah, together we do this, right? Sonia. <clears throat> well, so in order to get to that collective piece, there's also the idea that everyone has their own personal aesthetic, their personal mm. voice. Mm. They, they identify differently. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. knowing yourself helps you to know who you are as an artist, helps you to contribute to this collective being. So mm -hmm. I think those conversations that happen in our music and dance classrooms about developing your artist statement, figuring out what you, um, what do you think is good? What do you think is bad? What do you value? What do you hold in this artwork? That helps to bring that empathy and that sharing piece forward for students. And um, then, you know, thinking also the 2.0 version of this question is kind of going beyond <laughs> exposure, you know, so it's not just like here is a, a cultural dance form, let's all celebrate it, but mm. really looking and examining when I see this cultural dance form, what do I think of? What are my, um, you know, what biases come up for me? And, mm -hmm. and how can I learn from this style in a more deeper and fuller way. So um, that's the kind of work that we're engaging in, in that 2.0 um, kind of thinking. Mm -hmm. right. I love it, love it. And I was gonna allude to uh, the team's done some outstanding work with uh, culturally responsive scorecard. I know the work is ongoing. I certainly want to uh, show my appreciation. Thank you all for uh, digging in with this, um, in this work with the teachers. Thank you for the teachers that are participating mm -hmm. um, as we really start to, like, you know, sign up to 2.0, like we really start to dig into this and very important work. Mm -hmm. um, so we have one more question that I really want to mm -hmm. get out, but I will ask, um, we are a little over time. Can we get to one more question? Maybe take a couple of minutes. I don't want to derail the whole PSD. Um, <laughs> we have time for one more question. Are we okay I with that? So. Yeah, okay, okay, perfect. Great. All right. So we'd like to end with which singer artist would you have singing an album about your life and why? Mm. I know. Hmm. I can start on this one. Okay. <laughs> Happy to. Okay. So I picked an artist who has done work in kind of the pop 
um, genre and then also um, has written um, for musicals. So Sarah Bareilles is someone who comes to mind. Um, okay. Music is every, you know, a lot of original songs. So um, coming from like a real pure, authentic place and writing music. And then um, in thinking about my life, I would like it to be a musical if it was going to okay. be um, not just an album. <laughs> so it would have to have <laughs> You really <laughs> stand this question through, right. Sonia. Right. I love right. it. Yeah. Go, here, go you home. Know. I got you. All right. <laughs> Sarah Bareilles has that experience, and I love you know, <laughs> Chris, the musical is a favorite of mine. So okay. um, I, I would go with that um, and feel very confident that it could be authentic. And also, she you know touches on some really deep issues, women's rights, and mm. uh, and mm -hmm. things that are important. So I like that too. Sonia Sinkowski, the musical on the <laughs> right. Broadway. I can see it. I'm ready. Good. Right, mm -hmm. right. I'll take a yep. ticket. Oh, yep. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next, Brian, you want to go? Sure. <laughs> so, um, you know, you alluded to Van Halen and yes. I'm probably dating myself, but they were my favorite band in high school. So mm -hmm. I have to start with some Van Halen. I am agnostic when it comes to Hagar versus Roth. Um, <laughs> uh, that's a cut out man uh, but okay. we got another show coming up <laughs> although i will say i will say that i like the raw energy of david lee roth um okay, i'll take that mm -hmm. that said um you know, I, I think about, you know, phases in my life and I kind of took the playlist approach when thinking about this question. Um, so also thinking about, um, you know, high level artistry within my area. Um, mm. So, I, you know, I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention um, the Canadian Brass or uh, Wynton Marsalis or, oh. um, you know, um, some some other, um, you know, high level uh, brass players mm -hmm. and conductors. Um, but then probably most recently, um, you know, within my house and our um, kind of current uh, environment, I probably have to put something on from the Wiggles um, because of my <laughs> little children. Um, uh, they 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 inhabit my sleep, even though um, you know, I, I didn't I know really, they were still a thing. I uh, I don't know if they are. My you know three year old uh, you know still goes back to them. So I, <laughs> I got nothing, but um, you know they have to be on there. Sharon is going with the Roth. I love you too, Sharon. <laughs> That's fine. So. Okay, that's great. The Wiggles, I, you know, you, sp you speak like a, a, tr a true parent. <laughs> Your dad, right? <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. You went from Wynton Marsalis to the Wiggles. I love that, you know, span. <laughs> right, and Van Halen. Remember, you started with Van Halen. Van Halen, right. Nice, nice, nice range, Brian. Nice, nice, great range, right? Brian. Very nice. So we got, we got the musical. We've got this range we got of, of genres. Children's songs, yes. So. Yes. So let's see what Amy's got for us. Yeah, maker. Here we go. <laughs> so we're going to spin back in time, mm -hmm. and I I need my life portrayed by Michael Jackson. Oh, wow! That is good. And here's why. <laughs> so you know he was part of the Jackson Five. We are, all of us that are old, like myself, might remember that. Mm -hmm. But when Thriller came out, my yes. sister and I, and Dad, shout out to you. Sorry for all the Thriller <laughs> you watch. Um, that we learned every aspect of that dance because we both grew up in ballet, tap, jazz, tone, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And so we would act it out. We would sing it. And then, you know, all the great music and choreography. He was like the total package. Yes. And he has lasting legacy, which mm -hmm. I, you know, would, you know, mm -hmm. that I might have as well. So, <laughs> and, and he crosses cultural barriers. He's oh, like, yes. you know, he's an icon. Like, mm -hmm. I know I'm not going to be an icon, but I mean, <laughs> I'm sure he would tell my story well. So, Michael Jackson. Love it. My nephew, who's I think twelve or thirteen, was watching Beat It for the first time the other day. Oh uh, yeah. So you know, it was an interesting conversation to talk about Michael uh -huh. Jackson and his impact and how different music videos are today. Anyway, like, yes. mm -hmm. do, do you mm -hmm. remember the excitement of waiting for Thriller to come yeah, out? Absolutely. What, yeah, you know? like what the fifteen minute version yeah. aired on a Friday night. I'll never oh, forget that. It was I'm just saying, insane. like, I wasn't even born yet. <laughs> Oh, but Thriller, like you said, I mean, if you don't know, have an experience, you don't know how to take Thriller. Thriller. Oh, yeah. 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 It's an exper experience yeah. Thriller. I love it. So yes. it's right. It's, it's an ex amazing. All yeah. right. Yes. Wow. So, mm -hmm. That that punctuates things. Just <laughs> yes. You, you I, all, wow. Although we were talking about various contents, I had a blast. I love my music. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I love the fact that we were able to come together and we can't thank you enough. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much for having us. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Thank you. I, I, it was a lot of fun. Thank you for everyone who participated in the chat and spent mm -hmm. some time with us. Um, yeah. And of course, thank you to our guests, to my team. Yes. 
Always, and, always fun. Always mm -hmm. good to spend time. And Abir, thank yeah. you for joining us from, from Social Studies. Oh, you're welcome. Anytime right. we can collaborate, let me know. All right, Will everybody do. have a good rest of your day. Take care, everyone. Bye.